Alright, so now we are going to talk about errors in Power Query and the first and most important thing I need to mention here is the fact that errors in Power Query are not mistakes. We have to be able to differentiate between the two. So if you are supposed to write 5 and you eventually write 15, that is a mistake and that is not an error. What Power Query is going to consider to be an error is when something does not make sense logically. Let's go to my desktop, open up Power Query Essentials folder and I have a new file there, number 10 error. So let's open up this number 10 error file. So in this file, first we can see some visible errors on column H where we can see some Excel errors which in Excel is known as divide by zero error. This is something that happens when you divide a particular number by zero, you get a divide by zero error. Now there are several types of errors in Excel, this is just one of them. And when you import this data into Power Query, you are obviously going to end up with an error. Now another thing you can find is on the column for quantity, you are going to see some quantities written as capital letter S. Now if you try to convert the data type of this column into a whole number data type, you are definitely going to have an error because logically it does not make sense to say letter S is a number. Perhaps this is meant to be like number 5 or something. Now another one here is if you come to the order date column. Now for me, my Excel is currently, my Excel rather currently displays dates in the format of month, day and year. So for example, if I go to this row number 15, you can see that this is January, but the content is 1, 2, 2015 which is 2nd January 2015, but it is being displayed as month, day, year. So the month first, which is month one is January, then the day is two, day two. That's why you have 2nd of January 2014, because my computer currently is displaying dates in the US format, which is month, day, year. Therefore, something like the date we have on this row 14 is going to end up being an error because there is no month 22. So if we try to convert this column into a date data type column, we are going to have some errors here. So let's import all this into Power Query and see how these errors are going to be displayed. So I'm going to get data from Excel workbook and I'm going to my desktop to open my Power Query Essentials folder. There I'm going to have to connect to the number 10 workbook errors. The sales data is what I need. I'm going to transform data to go to Power Query Editor. So when I scroll to the right, you can see straight away that the price per unit column is already displaying errors because we have a divide by zero error. Now, if you don't have access to the source file or you just cannot see the error yet, how can you confirm what the error is about? So you basically have to come to the cell that contains the error Without clicking on the name part of the error, just click in an empty place in that cell that has errors. If I click on that cell, I'm going to have an error message here that tells me that this is a data format error and the error is actually because we have a value called divide by zero. So this essentially is an imported error into our Power Query. Now if I go to the quantity column and I try to click on the data type by the left hand side of the column header and I select whole number here then this is also going to give me an error and if I click in the cell for one of the errors it will also give me that error detail data format error we couldn't convert to number and the detail of what could not be converted to number is that letter S. Of course if you were going to treat something like this that is a data format error when you have a character that is meant to be a number, for example, the safest way for you to do this is to first of all convert that particular column into a text column. Make sure you replace current and then it's going to display everything as text and you can see the letter S are actually showing here. Then you can do a right click on this column to replace values. We're assuming that this letter S are supposed to be 5. So if I 
uh, find letter S and I replace that with 5, I can click OK here. That's going to replace all those occurrences of S with 5. And then I can come back here to change this column back to whole number without having error. We are going to have the same similar situation for the order date column. You can see that the date column does not have an applied data type yet because there is a mixture of valid and invalid values in that column. So if I click on this data type by the left hand side and I convert this into a date column, I am going to have error because if I click in this cell, it shows me that we couldn't pass the inputs provided as a date value and the detail is 22 slash 2 slash 2040 and that is because my computer recognizes month, day, year, which means the first part of the date is supposed to be a month, followed by the day and followed by the year. Now, if per adventure I realize from my findings that I can just switch 22 slash 2 back to 2 slash 22, then I'll be able to do that. I think I have another one here, which is 25 slash 2. So if there's a way I can switch 25 slash 2 to 2 slash 25, I will gladly do that. So again, safest way here is click on the data type and make sure you convert it to text. Text do not provide data format errors as long as the value in question is not an imported error. So if I replace current here, that is going to give me back everything as text, including this one. So I can now right click on the order date column. I can use the replace values to replace 22 slash 2 with 2 slash 22. I'm going to click OK. That is done. Then I can replace values a second time to replace 25 slash 2 with 2 slash 25. So when I click OK here, I can now change back this data type to date without having errors. Now, coming back to the price per unit option. There are also other ways of dealing with errors. So if I right click on this column, for example, we have an option that is to replace errors. And another option here is to remove errors. But removing errors is not really advisable because if you use the remove errors option, it is going to delete the entire row that has that error. So all records on that row are going to be deleted. However, we can go to use the option of replace errors. So I can replace this error, for example, because I know that this error arose from the fact that a number could not be divided by zero and essentially any number divided by zero can also be regarded as zero, right? So I'm going to replace all these errors on this column by zero and I'm going to click OK. 